Hello and welcome to the classroom. I'm Miss Kathy and this is Sue if you're new here and we're so glad that you've joined us for our letter of the day today and so much more. We're going to do all the subject areas and Sue we're going to do a special story time at the very end. So stick around and parents if you want to support this channel please subscribe, like, and share. That helps me to make more videos to help your children learn. Well, Sue, I think it's time for you to sit down because we need to do our class job before we can get started. Do you remember what our class job is? We have to feed Fred, our pet. So, bye Sue, we'll see you at the end. Will you help me feed Fred? Here you go, Fred, there's some fish food for you. Well, now that we have fed Fred, let's turn around and see what day it is. The month is November, and if we reach into our pail, we are going to count. We're going to count by whispering. Can you whisper as we say the numbers? Okay, here we go. Q is for quiet, so let's whisper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. 27. Today is November 27th. Can you say that? November 27th. That's today's date. If you want to know what day it is, then find 27 and go all the way up to the top. Today starts with the letter M, and I know that M says mmm. So what day starts with that sound? Monday. Today is Monday. Days of the week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Well, it's time to look outside the window. See what your weather looks like. Does it look sunny, rainy, cloudy, windy, snowy? When I do like this, just shout out whatever your weather is. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? It is. It is. It is. Out today. It is. It is. It is. Out today. Well, let's dress Weather Bear. We're going to put on some long pants for Weather Bear and a long sleeve shirt. And what is the season right now? The season is fall. The season is fall. Well, that was our calendar and weather time. And now it's time for our letter of the day. Today's letter is the letter Q. Do you have a Q in your name? If your name has letter Q, stand up. If your name has letter Q, stand up. If your name has letter Q, if your name has letter Q, if your name has letter Q, stand up. Well, today Q is for Quill. Do you know what a quill is? A quill is a pen made from a feather. Now today pens look like this, don't they? So you can use a pen if you want to, to decorate your letter Q. 
you can just draw on it with a pen or since quills are made from a feather you could also use a craft feather and you could dip it into some paint and you could paint your cue using a feather kind of like a paintbrush so that's what I did here I just painted my cue with a feather but remember you could always just use a pen and decorate your cue that way too well, now that we can recognize letter Q, next we're going to learn how to write it. To write letter Q, you're going to start at the top. You're going to go around and back, just like letter O. Then at the bottom, you're going to slide out. So can you make a big letter Q? All you have to do is make a letter O first. Go around and back and then slide out at the bottom. Around and back, and then slide out at the bottom. Looks like an O, and then at the bottom, just go inside and slide out. Well, that's the big letter Q. It used a big letter O, and little Q uses a little letter O. So make that little O, and then right beside it, go down and bounce. So it's like an O and then down and bounce. Can you make a little Q? First, make an O, a little O, and then right beside it, make a line that goes down and then just bounce up. O, down and bounce. O, down and bounce. O, down and bounce. That's the little letter Q. Well, I know you're doing a great job practicing, so I'm going to give you a sticker for your handwriting paper. There it comes. Well, now we know what letter Q looks like. We can recognize it and write it. So next we're going to talk about the sound that it makes. Letter Q makes this sound. Letter Q says as in quiet. Q says Can you put your finger on your lips and make that letter Q sound? As in quiet. Well, we're going to play a little game. It's a beginning sounds game. I'm going to say some words, and if the word starts with then I want you to do this. But if the word doesn't start with cool, 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 then don't do anything. Are you ready? You have to listen for beginning sounds. The first word is quiet. Cool, cool, quiet. Shh. Very good. Quiet starts with letter Q. The next word is quarter. Cool, cool, quarter. Shh. Quarter starts with letter Q. Good job. The next word is quit. Qu qu quit. Shh. Quit starts with letter Q. The next word is bicycle. B -b bicycle. No, bicycle starts with letter B. The next word is quick. Qu qu quick. Yes. Shh. Quick starts with Q. How about quail? Quail. Yes. Shh. The next word is caterpillar. C caterpillar. No. Caterpillar starts with C. Quilt. Qu qu quilt. Shh. Quilt starts with letter Q. Good job. The next word is quack. Qu qu quack. Shh. Quack starts with letter Q. The next word is quest. Qu -qu quest. Quest starts with letter Q. Shh. You did a great job today with our beginning sounds game. Well, that was all of our letter time. And now it's time to learn to tell time. That's what we're going to do for math today. This is a clock. There are lots of numbers on the clock, and there are two hands. But the hands don't look like our hands. The hands look like arrows. When the long hand is pointing to the 12, we say 
o'clock. Can you say o'clock? O'clock. The way that we write o'clock is we make two zeros. I'll show you. Zero, zero. This means o'clock. I'm going to put two little dots just before the zero, zero part. And right here, we're going to put what hour it is. Let me show you. So whatever the little hand is pointing to, that's the hour. And we say that number. What number is that? Two. So say two. Two. So we put two in the front before those dots. So what time is it? It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. All right, let's do a worksheet to help us practice telling and also writing time to the hour. Parents, you can get a copy of the lesson plan and all the worksheets at my blog. The link is below. Okay, let's look at this first clock. What is the shorthand pointing to? What number? That's number one. So we're going to write one in the front. Then we're going to write two dots, one at the top and one at the bottom. That's called a colon. Those dots separate the hour from the minutes. The long hand is pointing to the 12, so that means o'clock. We show o'clock by writing zero, zero. So what time is it? It's one o'clock. Let's look at the next clock. What number is the little hand pointing to? Six, that number is six. So we're gonna write six in the front. We're gonna put two dots, one at the top, one at the bottom. The long hand is pointing to the 12. So that means o'clock. How do we write o'clock? Zero, zero. That's how we write o'clock. Good job. So what time is it? It's six o'clock. You're good at telling time. Let's do it again. What is the little hand pointing to? What number? That's number eight. So I'm going to write number eight right here. Then I'm going to put two dots, one at the top and one at the bottom. The long hand is pointing to the 12. That means o'clock. How do we write o'clock? Zero, zero. So what time is it? It's eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock. I have to slide this paper out so I can get to the lines at the bottom. And I know that's very tiny, so I'm going to write the number bigger so you can see it. So what number is the little hand pointing to? Five. So let's write five in the front. Then we're going to put two dots, one at the top, one at the bottom. The long hand is pointing to the 12, so that means o'clock. So we're going to write zero, zero. So what time is it? Five o'clock. It's five o'clock. You're so good at telling time. Wow. Maybe you need a watch. You're good at this. What number is the little hand pointing to? Two. So we're going to write two in the front. Then we're going to put two dots. What is the long hand pointing to? Twelve. So that means o'clock. We write o'clock with two zeros. Zero, zero. So what time is it? It's two o'clock. Good. It's two o'clock. Last one, everybody. What is the shorthand or little hand pointing to? What number? Four. So let's write four in the front. 
and then two little dots, one at the top and one at the bottom. The long hand is pointing to the 12 again, so that means o'clock. How do we write o'clock? Zero, zero. So what time is on this clock? Four o'clock, four o'clock. Good job. You're good at telling time to the hour and writing the time. Well, now it's time for science and we're going over to the science table. We are going to do something fun to explore a little bit more about bird feathers. So come on, everyone. Let's go. For science today, you can see that I have cut out two paper feathers. Now, I'm going to put water on both of these feathers, but on this one feather, I'm also going to put this stuff. This is vegetable oil. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the vegetable oil, and I'm going to use my finger to spread it on one of the paper feathers like this. Okay, so I'm going to put some water on both of these feathers. Let's see what happens. So I'll put some water on this one, and I'll put some water on this one. Now, let's take a look. This is the paper feather that doesn't have any oil on it, and you can see that the water is soaking through the paper. I can even see it all the way through the back of the paper. Now, something neat is happening on this piece of paper. I put the oil on this one, and you can see that the water is not going through the paper. In fact, it's staying on the top. Can you see those water drops? They're staying on the top of the paper. They're not soaking through the paper. In fact, they can roll right off the paper. So that's because the oil is rubbed all over this feather. And birds do that. Birds have oil that they rub all over their feathers. And that oil causes the water when it rains to just roll right off their feathers and right off their back. It's almost like a raincoat. So if you've ever seen a bird and he's doing something with his beak and he looks like he's rubbing his feathers, He's probably just distributing the oil all over himself so that when it rains, the water just rolls right off his back. Well, that was our science for today. And next we're going to do art. For art today, we're making a paper quill. First, we need to make a paper feather. I have two ideas for you to make your feather. You can use paint and an old toothbrush and you can paint a feather like this just go this way and then the other way like that or you can just use your crayon make lines this way and the other way So once you get your feather painted or drawn, you're going to cut it out next. Okay, so now you're going to take your feather and you're going to glue it or tape it to a pencil or marker or pen. You can use tape if you'd like to. If you use glue, you need to make sure you give it a chance to dry. And there you have it. There's my paper quill. Now, the great thing is you could actually use this to write a story. If you want to write your own story today, then just take a piece of paper 
fold it in half, and ta-da, you have a book. So let's see, I wanna use my imagination. My story is going to be about a balloon. What will your story be about? You can use your quill and your imagination to write a story. Here's the rest of that story that I wrote using my quill. The balloon. Once a balloon was caught in a tree. A little boy came along and saw the balloon. He got the balloon out of the tree. Whoa, the balloon started carrying him all over the world. He explored places and continents that he'd never seen before. Then he floated back home. The end. <laughs> So you can use your imagination and you don't have to use words, just use pictures and write a story and tell it to your family today. Well, our story for story time is about Ralph and he's having a little trouble thinking about us what to write for his story. Let's see what we can learn from him. The name of our book is Ralph Tells a Story by Abby Hanlon. My teacher always said, stories are everywhere. And the kids in my class were always finding them. But every day at writing time, I thought really hard. I stared at my paper. I stared at the ceiling, but I could not write a story. Ah, uh, I have no story. So I looked for other things to do. I went to the water fountain. I roamed the hallways. I tried everything. Then one day, after getting sent back to my desk, I begged Daisy for help. I can't write a story because nothing happens to me. Are you kidding, she said. I've written a ton of stories about you. She began pulling her stories out of her desk. Look at this one, she said. Remember the time you let me brush your hair? And this one, remember the time you knocked down all the crayons? Oh, and remember the time you painted your nails with a black marker? I thought, I'll never be a great writer like Daisy. Then Daisy stapled all her stories together. Click, click. Wow, she said, this book is already 13 pages. Click, click. Can I use the stapler? I asked. I was really good at stapling. But you have to have something to staple. You have to find your story first, said Daisy. So I looked for stories out the window, in the aquarium, in my desk. And when my teacher wasn't looking, I looked for stories on the floor but still no stories. Lying under my desk reminded me of lying in the grass at the park. I closed my eyes and imagined I was at the park, just like that time a little inchworm crawled on my knee. The sun was shining right into my eyes. Squinting, I picked up the wiggly inchworm and looked at it close up. And that's where my teacher found me. What's your story about? she asked. I opened my eyes. Um, um, I, I saw an inchworm. Wonderful, she said. I can't wait to read what you wrote. But there was no inchworm story. I sat down and tried to write about the inchworm, but right away I got stuck. Psst, do you know any inchworm stories? I asked Daisy. She just rolled her eyes and kept on writing. And then my teacher said, Riders, come to the rug, time to share. Ralph, why don't you go first, said the teacher. I pretended that I had lost my paper. It didn't work. He's sitting on it. I walked to the front of the rug. It took a long time. I held my paper against my chest so no one could see it. I, I was at the park. I said, 
An inchworm crawled on my knee. It was quiet. My heart went thump, 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 thump. That's when I looked at Daisy. Wow, really? Did it feel squishy, Ralphie? Did you take it home? And then everybody started asking me questions. Did your mom let you keep it? Did you touch it? Was it a baby? Was it a girl? Did it tickle? Did you name it? Wait a minute, I thought. Something did happen with that inchworm. Well, I picked up the inchworm and decided to name him Nick. I built Nick a house, but he just inched away. So I followed him, which is why I didn't notice that someone was following me. And then all of a sudden, this wobbly, crazy baby grabbed Nick and put him in his diaper. I tried to be calm. Come on, baby, I said really nicely. Give Ralphie the inchworm. It didn't work. Was this the end of Nick? But then I noticed Nick was escaping. He crawled right up the baby's stomach. Quickly, I rescued Nick and ran. And we spent the rest of the afternoon doing nothing together. The end. Everybody started to clap. They loved my story. Show the picture, Ralph. Show the picture, someone said. I wasn't embarrassed anymore, so I did. That was last year. This year I write stories all the time. I keep finding stories everywhere. The end. Well, Ralphie and his class wrote a story, and maybe you want to write your own story. You can use your quill and your imagination. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Tomorrow, art is for read. So I'll see you then. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.